So I'll just dive straight in. Nice to meet you all. Um, so I'm Loy Cattell. I work in our employee communications and engagement team as a digital communications manager. So I'm responsible for managing all of our internal digital communication tools, and that includes our SharePoint based intranet, our digital signage, We've got about 250 employee facing screens across the network, our email campaigning system, apps like Slido, and of course, Yammer. Um, and I'm joined by my colleague James, who I believe is on the call. Yep, hello there. I'm James. Uh, I work with or I manage the team that Lloyd's based in. And so we also look after um, some of our other internal tools, such as uh, we still rely on some print based uh, publications to reach those really difficult to reach audiences as well. And then things like how we're responding to the pandemic and, and bringing people hopefully back into the office, although that looks like it's going a little south today here in London. So over to you, Lloyd. Thanks, James. Yeah, I'll just say, uh, James, you are either you are in a very dark place or your camera is off. So if you if you if you turn it on, if you if you need to, then we can spotlight you. I see. I'm, cool. I'm on the bus. Is James on. is on the tube. That's why you can't see him because it's too dark. Should be on. I might have some technical issues as I'm in the office today. Apologies. Cool. Well, I will get started anyway. Um, so. Just, I suppose, as a bit of an introduction to who Transport for London is, though I'm sure a lot of you will have a bit of an idea. But essentially, we were formed in 2000 and we're the integrated transport authority responsible for meeting the mayor's strategy and commitments to transport in our capital city. Um, we run the day to day operation of the capital's public transport network and we also manage London's main roads as well. We directly employ about 28,000 people and the London Underground roughly make up about three quarters. And that includes most of the people on our front line. So station colleagues, train drivers, that sort of thing. So our use of Yammer, just as a bit of background on that, um, we actually first introduced Yammer in 2009, but it didn't become mainstream until 2012, where it was used significantly for the Olympics. So we had lots of travel ambassadors. This was before my time at TFL, but lots of travel ambassadors that wore um, pink high vis jackets. You might have seen them on uh, on the TV at the time, and they used Yammer to kind of keep in contact with each other. It was a really great place to share photos, exciting events, all of that sort of stuff. After the games ended, there wasn't really any business ownership of Yammer and eventually someone did something that they shouldn't have. I'm not sure what, but it was shut down. Um, and then sort of a few years passed and then in 2015, our team successfully pushed for it to be reintroduced and we became the business owners in employee comms. Um, I think we were really supported by feedback from colleagues in our employee engagement survey we'd done where lots really wanted it back because they'd seen it as such a value. And then today, three quarters of our business are considered active users, and it's one of our most important employee communication channels. So I've shared some of our key team objectives here, but I'm not going to go into detail because I'm sure you'll have similar reasons for selling Yammer as a tool for the business. But I, I thought it'd be really worth pausing and highlighting that for us, the single most important thing that we always consider is that Yammer is a place to facilitate two way conversations with colleagues. We don't use it as a tool to just simply send messages out and then disappear. We let our people tell us what they think and we reply to even the toughest of questions. So and so do our leaders, to be honest. It's one of the few comms channels that lets colleagues communicate with us. And that's the really beautiful thing about it. So. A little bit of a back background of how many people in our business use it, because I think this is kind of interesting. So in the last 30 days, there's been 2.6 million activities. That's like red messages, all of that kind of stuff. Um, not only that, but we've got 23,000 active Yammer users. So they've accessed Yammer in some form in the last 30 days. Of those 23,000, between four and 6,000 are regularly posting. And then we have between 10 and 20 logins every day. And then there's 250 pretty active communities. And it's probably worth mentioning here that we also were very lucky to win Swoop's benchmarking awards for outstanding collaborative performance in a large organization um, in the EMEA category. And we also have the most responsive community in the world. So managing Yammer isn't a perfect science by any means. And we do have lots of challenges that I'll discuss in a little while, but I thought it was really worth starting by highlighting the things that we love about Yammer and showing you some real, real examples of where it's added most value to our business. 
So I'll share a couple of campaigns that I think really highlight how brilliant Yammer is for us. Um, the first one relates to the Northern Line extension, which was basically the opening of two new stations, um, the first two new stations since the Jubilee Line was established, and they were in Battersea Park and Nine Elms. It was a really huge deal for Transport for London, and our employee commerce campaign had an enormous focus on Yammer. So what we did is we had two colleagues from our team that went out to the new stations at 5 a.m. ready for the first train to depart. There was loads of people from the press, from the government. It was quite an exciting thing. Everyone was queuing up to kind of get on. I think I was muted there, but I'll carry on. Hopefully you can still hear me. Um, so yeah, so um, they, they interviewed some of our leaders, they shared videos of the event um, with people waiting to, to basically have that chance to be on the, the first train. So our colleagues, shared all of this live on Yammer with uh, the topic Northern Line extension. And then we went through all the posts in our office to tag everything related to the extension, which was hundreds of posts and probably one of the most significant campaigns on Yammer we had. Uh, it was kind of like you were there, but you weren't there. And then we used the share our SharePoint intranet to share a news story basically with a Yammer Conversations web part. So people could see kind of everything that was going on all the time, no matter what Microsoft tool they were on. It was a really fantastic campaign and showed the power Yammer has to connect colleagues and help them collaborate right across our network. And the next case today I sort of wanted to show was basically every year we have what's called an underground in bloom competition. And this is quite a historic thing. It's been going on for a number of years, but basically stations across London underground grow flowers and plants in order to win in different categories. It leads to some Sorry, it leads to some pretty stunning displays on stations. And my personal favourite is the really creative displays that stations that are based only underground put together. Because obviously with a lack of light, it's pretty hard to grow flowers, but they still do a brilliant job. Basically, as part of this, colleagues from across the business volunteer to judge, and then they'll score different locations and a winner will be selected. Last year during the pandemic, we couldn't run the competition in the same way. So instead, we had a Yammer focused competition. So colleagues shared pictures of plants in their stations, and we also encouraged people to grow plants at home and, and share their pictures. We received loads of really positive feedback. I think it gave a lot of people something to do in, in lockdown. You have to remember lots of our colleagues were perhaps living alone in flats, and it was something that they could engage with. And I think that really made a positive difference. So things this year were a little bit more normal, but we still carried out a similar theme. So we still had all of the, the judging that went on um, had, in, had been going on since previous years, but we also kept the Yammer aspect of it. And I think it's just been a really positive example of how Yammer can be used to collaborate even at the absolute worst of times. So next I'll talk a little bit about our leaders on Yammer. And this is something that I can't personally take credit for because our whole team has worked really, really hard to build a brand for Yammer and supporting leaders has been just a huge part of it. So some of the most influential people on the network are actually our senior leaders. Um, as an example, our commissioner, Andy Byford. Andy was actually previously the president of New York's transport network. And while he was over there, he carried the nickname Train Daddy you can Google it. There's lots of articles about him being the train daddy over there, but it was largely because he was always seen on the network interacting with customers and staff. So it's still the case now since he moved to run Transport for London. The picture above there kind of shows him on Liverpool Street Station with some colleagues for Remembrance Day. He's always out and about seeing people, finding out how the network is and interacting with customers and staff. But with so many people working in different locations because of the pandemic, it's been a really fantastic place for him to share updates. We've seen loads of video updates, responses to questions that colleagues have asked, updates of him up, out and about on the network. And we also get to kind of hear about experiences of him spending time with different colleagues. So he, he'll go and spend time with the team in the underground or our contact center, and then he shares it. And it's really interesting to see his experience with them. And then likewise, our managing director of London Underground, Andy Lord, works in a really similar way. And he's always sharing pictures of himself with teams on the network. And we actually saw recently um, him share pictures of him helping out on the gate line at Wembley during the Euros, which was, I think, madness. And then one of our biggest employee bases are our front line, and that includes thousands of tube operators or drivers and thousands of customer service colleagues across our network. So basically, 
I would say they're probably the most challenging group of people to communicate with because they don't really spend much of their time on devices. Now, our customer service colleagues have access to iPads, which means they can read emails and the intranet, but our tube drivers don't have any work devices. So kind of just to give you an idea of a typical day for them, one of our tube drivers would arrive for their shift. They then have a seven minute safety briefing. We can't communicate with them on that safety briefing for obvious reasons. And then they go off and start driving one of our trains. They have a, a meal break in between, finish their shift, then they head home. We really only have the ability to make impressions on them rather than actually communicate. So using things like digital signage, posters, leaflets are some of our biggest tools. But, you know, it, it's going to leave an impression, but it's not necessarily going to reach all of them. I think there's lots that will miss the messages and that that's the biggest problem. And then kind of enter Yammer. Um, it's been an incredibly powerful tool for us to communicate with our frontline people, especially train operators. So even though they don't have access to work devices, we've got a bring your own device setup, meaning they can download access Yammer on their personal phone. And when we look at Microsoft stats, we've been able to work out that about 45% of our train operators are active Yammer users many of which use the network to share their thoughts, challenges and opinions. And then we have the ability in comms to use some of the fantastic features on Yammer. My personal favorite is featured conversations because it often reaches like 15,000 people, but we can use that to share the messages with Frontline as they're using Yammer for other reasons. It's somewhere that colleagues choose to visit. They often seek it out because they want to connect with others in the business and see everything that's happening. In my view, it's the single most important tool in communicating with our frontline. And it's really wonderful to see our leaders engaging with Yammer so effectively because they know that it will get them through to a huge percentage of our business, including our frontline. So managing a network with 28,000 people is incredibly fascinating, particularly with the diversity of job roles at Transport for London. I mean, from my perspective, Yammer allows me to see the fascinating hidden side of Transport for London. I get to see pictures of our night workers as they repair and maintain our trains. Basically, when we're all sleeping, I can see snippets of new stations, including the Elizabeth line before anyone else. And I can also get behind the scenes looks at things like our commercial partnership team when they turn the signs in Oxford Circus into PlayStation buttons. It's an outstanding place. The good will always outweigh the bad. But that's not to say that it's always smooth sailing. And we have so many people that use the network so frequently, there's times when we have to get involved. So just in case you've forgotten, we have 28,000 people on the IAMA network, 23, 28,000 people on the IAMA network, 23 active users and 250 active communities. So we have a lot to manage. James, myself and John in our team look after the network, but it's only really one small part of our roles. After all, we have to look after all the other digital tools as well. We have really clear processes and rules that we're currently actually working on improving but they allow us to ensure that things that aren't acceptable on the network are easy to deal with and that we're really consistent in the way that we manage this. So our key house rules, I'll basically I'll share our key house rules with you. There's lots more detail on these for colleagues to read through, but just as a bit of a brief, we've got think before you post, which reminds colleagues that they should consider how comments might be read by others, especially as conversations aren't face to face. BU, which relates to the need to keep Yammer open, visible, transparent, and encourage colleagues to add things like a profile picture. Share responsibly is basically ask colleagues to consider what they're posting, particularly ensuring they don't share confidential information like personal data. Keep it professional. This just reminds colleagues that their opinions are always welcome, but they need to be polite and constructive in comments and they can't use like discriminatory, offensive language or be seen to attack other people. Um, don't reproduce trade union content. It's pretty self-explanatory, but we don't allow trade union content on Yammer. And then check before you post. And this relates to ensuring posts don't contain deliberate or damaging misinformation and or represent unsubstantiated personal opinion as fact. And it's actually a house rule that we've worked on developing since COVID to try and tackle any misinformation. So these rules have all helped us manage Yammer. And in 99% of circumstances, they're really easy to apply and justify for example, if a colleague had used bad language, we can easily jump in and say, please remove it. And if they don't, we can remove it ourselves and quote the house rules pretty simply. 
However, there are some situations, and I'm sure we've all had them, where a post comes close to breaking the house rules, but it's really hard to determine if they've actually been broken. And in these cases, we'll never make a decision on whether or not to intervene by ourselves, because often it'll be the case that we have our own opinions on what to do next. We really, What we basically do is we use a Teams chat to discuss the situations, and then we come to a collective de decision. Um, and then quite often we'll also agree a written response before we actually send it. So in some cases, colleagues will disagree with the way that we've applied the rules. And that really highlights the benefits of making a tough decision in a team, because it's much easier to defend our position when we've got other colleagues supporting us. And sometimes you really need that confidence. We'll make clear that we're listening to colleagues all the time. And on occasions, their feedback leads to improvements in the way that we manage Yammer. I'll be honest, personally, I'm really proud of the way that we apply our house rules. I can't think of any situation where we've not been fair and most importantly, not been consistent in our approach. It really comes back to the power of collective agreements because when we have discussions in a group, one of us is likely to have seen something similar in the past and we can use that as a baseline to deal with the current situation. It makes our job a thousand times easier. From our perspective, it'd be fantastic to hear about how you guys all deal with challenging situations in the discussion separately. And then um, last, my last slide. So there are lots of challenging moments on Yammer, but as I said before, the good will always outweigh the bad. So when a pandemic brought our entire planet to a halt, thousands of people had to go into the unknown and keep thousands of our people had to go into the unknown, keep doctors, nurses, police officers, and even more moving. Those people could share their positive moments and how proud they were of the job that they were doing. But just as importantly, they could share their challenges, their concerns, and be listened to. Our occupational health team and leaders were able to respond to people, to reassure them, and offer support where needed, all because Yammer gave us a place to share how they were feeling. We're really lucky in that our leaders are almost as invested in Yammer as us, so I can never really see a day where we'd need to defend it. But if we did, it would be a really easy platform to defend because there are countless situations that demonstrate the immense value Yammer has to the people at TFL. I titled the presentation Engaging Thousands to Keep Millions Moving Each Day because our Yammer network does just that. Our people keep the city moving and this is the place to engage and connect with people across that business. And at that, I'll finish. But thank you very much for taking the time to listen. I really hope this has been useful. James and I will join in a separate discussion room and you're welcome to join and ask us any questions.